Medvedev, mm-hmm. I, I noticed how you recently tweeted out about his comments about capturing more and more of Ukraine. And I'm wondering about like your your opinions on, on him as a figure. Like what exactly is his role in Russia now? Like, yeah, yes, he was, you know, um, he, there was this kind of like interregnum period. You know, Putin wasn't president. He was president. Uh, at the same time, th- there seems to be something about him where he's either like spinning out of control, like maybe he's getting more and more drunk, but he seems to always be expressing like like a, a an unhealthy part of the Russian id. Like if you get a Russian to be like as frenzied and as like barbaric as possible, they would say the kinds of things that Medvedev is saying because Putin himself doesn't deliver these kinds of statements, right? He's not talking about, we're going to capture this and capture that. And keep, you know, he's very circumspect in that way. And uh, I mean, it's like not that different, I guess, from other situations like in America where, you know, Trump might be a little bit more uh, circumspect about what he says, but then he has his surrogates say the insane stuff that his base loves. So what exactly is like this uh, figure of Medvedev? Like, what is his role now? And what, what are all these like recent comments about? Is this like an ominous development or is Medvedev just like getting drunk again? Or, or how would you phrase it? Yeah, I think this is like popular explanation, even uh, that uh, Medvedev is uh, kind of doing this because he's drunk. And uh, I saw when I was in France uh, this summer for vacation, I saw French television and they had some uh, like, uh, refugee, a Russian uh, kind of uh, journalist, female journalist who said this is basically about Medvedev, that he, this, uh, he's uh, basically alcoholic and so on. And this mm-hmm. was explanation given uh, about his statements. And I think this is a misrepresentation of, 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 of this uh, because his, uh, his, uh, Posts in Telegram, or social media, is, I think, very significant, kind of, and they should not be dismissed uh, mm-hmm. you know, as, as uh, just uh, some kind of uh, drunken uh, kind of um, talk. Because I think he is, uh, for a number of reasons, because he's not only former president of Russia, but he's also deputy head of National Security Council, which is headed by Putin, as far as I know. So in this case, he has a senior position in the government, in, 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 in the Russian government, and specifically responsible for national security policy, which includes Ukraine, a war in Ukraine. And so, and his kind of posts, which, which he said that Russia could, uh, could take away uh, not only Tete, which is already annexed, but also Odessa and other regions like Mykolaiv and even Kyiv. I think this is, I think, very serious and very omnibus development because it means that there is uh, kind of even, uh, it could have been, it, I think there's a real possibility that Russia would not just stop this, um, this kind of, this territory which it already annexed, but um, would try to take more territory. And I think Odessa, as I mentioned, would be very likely uh, choice. And uh, maybe Kharkiv would be a very likely choice because they have a, um, um, kind of a, not only strategic location and strategic value for Russia, but also they um, have a population which were more pro Russian, um, kind of uh, in these regions before the Maidan, and also still there is, I think, it would be um, significant support for, for Russia after if they would be able to occupy these regions after because um, there are many. Kind of many uh, people who are Russian, uh, but they may be secretly so, so uh, like uh, similar to what was the situation with uh, Kherson and the Persian region. Then after Russian annexation, there was a little uh, kind of uh, resistance to, to Russia by by people, and there was a significant collaboration by former top local officials, who, from uh, again who joined, who became uh, kind of heads of local administration, and now represent Russia in these regions again, which are annexed um, by Russia without any kind of recognition by, by other states, but de facto they became the next regions. And I think this is a real possibility that Russia would try to do the same with, with at least Odessa, maybe Mykolaiv and, um, and the Kharkiv region. I'm not sure about Kyiv, but I think uh, he mentioned Kyiv as a kind of a, as a reference that this is the ancient Russian capital, a Kyiv Rus state, and, uh, and basically claiming that Russia can also take away Kyiv. I think this might be, again, I think it will be very difficult to do this, but and I think maybe much less significant. But I think it might be part of of uh, trying to kind of issue maximum demands, basically as uh, as incentive. Basically, so, so if Russia would say, if Medvedev would say they no longer kind of Russia would say they are no longer interested in Kyiv, but they want to check just uh, Odessa 
and Kharkiv, so this would kind of give some kind of, uh, how should I say, uh, just uh, resemblance or some kind of, of, of concession by Russia, but actually this would not be concession, this would be just uh, basically forced decision to annex uh, other territory of Ukraine, and basically uh, just recognize status to quo and just mention Kyiv uh, for the sake of uh, of, uh, of uh, kind of reference, but I think that another this is, but I think this is very serious because it also means that Russia might consider Kyiv as important goal, uh, maybe not to annex, but uh, maybe occupy and check by military force in case of of, uh, of Ukrainian defeat, time to to kind of uh, and to do this for purpose of uh, having regime change, basically to 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 overthrow Ukrainian government either by military force or kind of or by installing. Uh, and um, forcing uh, a new change of um, regime change in Ukraine and uh, installing a pro-Russian government, which then would uh, rule over the territory of Ukraine, which would not be annexed by Russia, but would be, and this would be easier for Russia basically to control, and this would immediately resolve kind of um, demands by Russia about uh, kind of neutrality, and, about, and it would be easier to implement policies basically by making uh, like Kyiv by kind of regime change in Kyiv and turning basically uh, you, uh, remaining part of Ukraine into next uh, Belarus, like Belarus, uh, which is like client state of Russia. So they want basically to to do the same with Kyiv, Kyiv government and replace Kyiv government with uh, this client state of um, which will be client state of Russia, no longer client state of the United States. But I don't think that uh, that uh, Russian even Medvedev. He um, kind of uh, he would want to uh, kind of he made claims about taking back Western Ukraine because Western Ukraine is very anti-Russian. And I'm originally from Western Ukraine, and this is like an regions which would be so they are like overwhelmingly anti-Russian, and so and and uh, and they in, uh, if, even if Russia would try to occupy these regions, which is I'm not sure if if would, they want to do this. But uh, it will be very heavy resistance, like uh, popular resistance, and, and maybe like underground resistance, like after as uh, as took place after World War Two, and or in the end of World War Two, when it was uh, insurgency by Ukrainian insurgent army and uh, organization of Ukrainian nationalists, which was led by Bandera, Stepan Bandera and Shukhevich, and, and it was based in in um, in Galicia region and also in Volinia region in Western Ukraine, Bukovina. So, so I think for this region, for this reason, Russia. Kind of might be interested at uh, time maybe to divide Ukraine and to give Western Ukraine maybe to Poland. They claim the same that Poland would try to take back Western Ukraine, but I don't think this is the kind of realistic and uh, also policy. But I think they, in any case, they want to have a kind of now kind of uh, uh, kind of use this war uh, against Ukraine, just uh, trying to basically neutralize Ukraine as a future uh, challenge, uh, not only uh, defeating militarily, but making sure that Ukraine would not, again, become a kind of, uh, there will be no resumption of, of conflict in the future, and they want to do this by regime change or even by overthrowing the government in Kyiv, and I think this is uh, very significant because, uh, kind of, uh, and this is, I think, why it's, uh, his uh, statements need to be taken very seriously because this is, I think, uh, might represent uh, actual Russian goals, even so not all of them need to be taken at face value, like in case of, uh, kind of, of taking back Kyiv, but I think uh, regime change in Kyiv is a realistic possibility and, uh, and I think it would be used by Russia trying to kind of uh, initiate such regime change in Ukraine in addition to annexing uh, other regions of Ukraine, which is also a real possibility. And I think this is why it's, uh, it's kind of, it's, um, it's needs to be taken with uh, very serious consideration. Even so, again, this is not kind of a statement by Putin, but uh, he's one, Medvedev is one of his senior aides and senior officials, and he's talking about, and this is not just his personal position, he's talking about uh, kind of as a as a uh, official, national official, and I think this is a very serious development, and this is also very dangerous for UK because this means that uh, Russia might not be interested in accepting any peace deal, which would again give a, a government in UK uh, kind of uh, open for joining NATO, even the state which would be controlled by the UK government, or even uh, now uh, even joining European Union might be not be uh, now possible. For, for Russia, this, Russia might not accept this. My, Russia might want to have totally kind of a dependent government in Ukraine, similar to uh, to Belarus, and and I think this is uh, I think also uh, very important uh, in this regard.